I have had enough of anti-white hatred. I really have had enough of it. I have had enough of having my skin colour degraded and insulted at every opportunity. I have had enough of it. It's from the United Nations down. I've had enough of it. I really have. We have... White people have absolutely nothing to apologise for. We have nothing to feel guilty about. And Europe is our little part of the world, and we have every right to a homeland, just like every other racial group on this planet. Hello again there folks, so I thought I'd wind down the week on uh, British populism and the, the little sort of nationalist parties, UKIP, with Tommy Robinson situation, I thought I've, I've been into it quite a bit this week so I thought I'd round it off by taking a look at For Britain and a few people contacted us and they weren't very happy because I, I, they said that I'd been ignoring the party, I hadn't really spoken about them, I mean there is a reason for that that I'll get into. But I will say that of all of these populist nationalist parties popping up in Britain at the moment, For Britain is the closest to the politics I'd like to see. And Anne-Marie Waters is, in my opinion, the smartest of them all, of all these characters. Uh, by a country male, actually. Anne-Marie Waters as being the most explicitly racial since the days of Nick Griffin. And she also talks at uh, great length about the Great Replacement, globalism, the fact that multiculturalism is destroying diversity, and that white people are the indigenous people of Europe. I mean, this is ballsy stuff. These are white nationalist talking points. You can't take that away from her. Nobody else out there was coming near to this. And, you know, I took a bit of flack over the, the last uh, UKIP video, and I tried to explain that digging down into the context of not raping politicians wasn't an issue I was invested in and nor was the reaction of the smear merchants but for Britain's talking points are oh, I've spent year, I've spent 10 years trying to raise awareness of the demographic crisis uh, and uh, in the early days Islam and race and uh, far more cultural Marxism so these are the kind of things that I want to see brought into the discourse uh, the manifesto has a lot of meat as well, which I've, I've been reading. Uh, they're going to scrap the BBC licence fee, which would kill the largest global homo propaganda outlet in the country. Hate speech laws will be abolished completely, and God knows we need that. They mentioned the, the national debt, which was nice. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'd, and cutting back on all those lefty quangos and governmental bodies which ram filth down the throat of the nation as a matter of policy. Islam, uh, he, as you'd expect, Islam comes in for a particular battering from, from for Britain. And this leads us into the part where I have to be very careful what I say because it concerns Israel, uh, that group. I have to be very, very careful what I say here and because they're shutting us down. So for Britain is ardently pro-Israel and that's what triggers people, including me, because when people say for Britain's stance on Islam, they're torn. The counter-jihad types do this all the time and it has to stop. It's all very well raising the issue of grooming gangs in this country. Fantastic. But that does not mean that our people should be picking sides in the geopolitics of the Middle East. And Israel is doing fine, by the way. They have the American State Department on speed dial. The entire US military machine, regardless of who gets voted into the White House, is right there behind them. They're doing okay. And that kind of power raises yet more questions. If as a globalist elite, then wouldn't they use the most powerful military on earth to protect what's most precious to them? This is a problem because it asks questions of the true nature of the globalist elite. 
and the money they have and the banks and the media outlets they own and the political parties they've paid for and the left-wing thug groups they funded to crush populism and to go after people like for Britain. So how does a small patriotic party get around this bind? It seems to me the way forward is to quietly shelve this issue, gently remove these talking points from the platform and claim neutrality. No need for hate speech, no need to be offensive, no need to go mental. A party that represents the natives is enough. That what happens in the Middle East is just none of our business. We all know that this is a wedge issue when it comes to For Britain and the Counter Jihad and Tommy Robinson. They know it and we know it and I think everybody's a little bit tired of it. I'm sure everybody's tired of people running around calling them shills um, and, and purity spiralling on our side and tired of where you know you, you're sort of being bullshitted. Um, they also know that we are right. They know the fact that I can't speak freely on YouTube now is testament to the fact that I'm right. It's not Muslims censoring everybody. What does Britain, what does for Britain think of the new Holocaust Memorial at the Houses of Parliament? It's there to remind people never to vote for the politics of for Britain. All of the elites came out and told us it was part of a sacred mission, they called it, to fight racism, by which they mean Europeans recognising themselves as a group with interests in the same way that the group who are represented by a memorial are a people with their own interest. This is the wedge. And if you're going to dabble in this part of the political spectrum, you have to be aware of it. Now, every day more people are becoming aware of it and those people will be drawn towards a party such as For Britain. So, uh, to give Anne and For Britain the benefit of the doubt here, they're in a bad spot because they can't openly admit that they understand. If they have become aware of this recently, as so many people have, well, I mean, what do you do? You can't come out and just say it. What are they supposed to say? I think the answer is nothing. Quietly shelve the stance on Middle Eastern politics. It's none of our business. Uh, plead neutrality. Just don't be pro them. Nobody is asking anyone to be anti anyone or anything else. It isn't about crazy rhetoric or anything like that. Just a recognition that it naturally follows that if we truthfully follow our own path, then others aren't going to like it. But we're going to have to follow our own path regardless. The good news is that after watching some of the recent material for Britain, this seems to be the direction they're going in anyway. Uh, but our people are crying out for a party like this. But we've been burned so many times before. People are naturally suspicious when they see the signs again. The signs coming from Fro from Fro Britain don't look too bad at all at the moment. And we're running out of time. So I'm really kind of on board. If we can just get rid of this wedge issue. If we can just pull the thorn out of all of our feet. Um, so that's that's that. That's what I've got to say there. But by far the best we've got at the minute. Except for that one issue. But that's, the ball's in their court on that. I'll catch you later folks. <laughs>